everyone, welcome back. My name is Cora Diane. Today it's so gloomy outside. It's raining, but it's the perfect like curl up with the soup and watch your favorite movie kind of weather. And so I really kind of hope that, you know, if you're experiencing some kind of gloomy weather, maybe you're kind of kicking back and relaxing with my video. Today's going to be a fun one. I'm going to be talking about some secondhand finds. And I love doing these videos because for me as a creator who makes content talking about shopping and stuff, sometimes I feel like I don't want to make videos just selling you guys stuff, but I definitely still want to talk about fashion and talk about purses and shoes and, and you know, just all the fun girly stuff that I love without the added pressure of thinking that I'm selling you guys stuff. And also I want you guys to know that I'm not here to just sell you stuff. I definitely am here to just talk about fashion for the fun of it. And so that's why I like these secondhand videos because even though you guys can't get these exact same things, what I'm really telling you guys is how amazing buying things secondhand is. It's good for the environment uh, because we're stopping things from going to waste. It's also um, great on the budget because a lot of times these things are much less expensive. I got some designer bags for such a cheap price, you're gonna die. I also have some really great fashion finds to share with you guys today and one item that is not secondhand but it's extra special and I wanted to share it with you guys. So uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and just dive right in. I'm gonna start out by talking about some purses because buying secondhand bags is one of my absolute favorite things. Um, I can't even remember the last time I bought a brand new purse. And I don't have any plans to do so in the future. And I think the main reason why I don't like to buy brand new bags is because I like a bag that's actually broken in a little. I like it when the leather softened out a little bit or uh, it just kind of has that worn look to it. I don't know, maybe it's because I've been buying secondhand like my whole life that like I just like the look of used things. But anyway, the first bag I'm gonna share with you guys today is this beautiful red burgundy piece from Etienne Ag Eigner. So it's a lovely burgundy bag. I really, really loved it. You can see it's definitely got a little bit of wear and tear but it's nothing that's egregious. Also, a lot of modern bags are like vintage dyes or like kind of distressed to look old. I like that it had two separate pockets so I could put different things in different pockets. It has this little back one that actually fits. My big brick of a modern iPhone fits in this vintage bag beautifully. The hardware on it is a silver, which has over time has a little bit of a, a patina on it, but overall it's very shiny silver. This bag is in excellent condition. It is a over the shoulder bag. It's not a crossbody unless you want to get real awkward with it. I mean, you can. I just wouldn't recommend it. It's not really like a workhorse bag for me, but it's definitely what I like to wear for date nights or just going out with the girls or going out for dinner or whatever. It's a great little bag and I like that it's simple. So I can wear this with my more exciting accessories. Another little feature I love is that the uh, little the little things to secure it are oval and I have a little crush on oval and heart shaped things. The trim here, which is just a marker of a nicer quality bag versus something that's completely smooth. And on the inside, it actually says that it was handmade, which is quite lovely. One thing I wanna note, if you are new to buying vintage bags uh, or if you just had never have done them before, I do want to warn you, they may have a little bit of a vintage smell to them. Some people are super turned off. Ooh, is that the rain? Can you guys hear it? Can you guys hear the rain? It is pouring. I love it. You can use Lysol wipes or something to wipe it out, but you might not ever get rid of the smell completely. One thing that can also help is sticking dryer sheets inside the lining. Just make sure it doesn't touch the leather. I paid $15 for this. I think that's absolutely worth every every single penny. I'm trying to even think like, where could you even go and buy a bag for $15? There's no way that I could buy a, brand, a bag brand new for $15 and this is designer and it's a vintage style. I'm not sure if this is from the 70s or the 80s, but both eras are, are ones I love. Like check out my hot, sexy 80s style fringe top, which I also bought secondhand, but is actually a newer piece. This is from City Chic. I already showed it to you guys in a video last summer. So anyway, steal a video on this. Next bag is actually hanging up behind me. I'm gonna get up and get it for you. So this is a bag from a brand called Art Bag. I had never heard of them before. I saw this on one of the various secondhand shopping sites and it just looked like it was in beautiful, perfect condition. I liked the way that it looked like Chanel, but it wasn't quite Chanel. And it has this really cool clasp. Look at how bitchin' this clasp is. It's very, very 70s slash 80s. It is 
delicious. The chain is in perfect condition. Like literally this bag pretty much looks like it hasn't been used since whenever it was originally purchased. I love the detail here that follows to the clasp. It just has a really classy look to it. You open it up. You see that there's this inside, so you can also make it into just a clutch by putting the chain inside the bag. And then the inside of the bag is red. Oh, I also have a vintage coin purse in there as well. On the inside, it says Art Bag is the brand. It's made in Italy. Still over the moon about this bag. It's so beautiful. Every time I wear it, I get a million compliments. This bag is just kind of my miracle bag. I had never heard of this brand before. I saw it and I just thought, you know, that reminds me a lot of Chanel and Versace and uh, Christian Louboutin, but it's it's not, you know, overly ornate. It's very beautiful. And I believe this brand actually still sells this bag. So you can buy this brand new for about $400. Um, I was much happier with the price I paid, which was $35. I know. <laughs> the next thing is something that Mikey actually got me for Christmas this year. I like Marc Jacobs handbags, but they're really expensive and I just, I'm not that into buying new anymore because I just don't want to drop hundreds of dollars on a bag. I just don't want to. And because most of my bags are vintage, I don't want to make them my workhorse bag. I don't want to make them the one that I throw around and th just throw lipstick and leave it in there. You know, like, you know how we mistreat our bags. I don't want to do that with my vintage ones. I want to treat them like they're special. I I want to make sure that, that they're not going out in the rain, for instance. I'm wanting a bag that could just be my workhorse that I didn't have to worry about. I have a couple of nicer bags from uh, Coach and from Kate Spade, but one of them I'm thinking about selling. And then the other one is a taupey gray color that just doesn't go with all my outfits. And I wanted something that was just a little bit closer to neutral. I was at first looking for like a leather a uh, bag that was kind of like a luggage brown, but what I ended up finding was this. This is a Marc Jacobs um, messenger bag. It has a magnetic closure, which is really nice. I don't have to worry about a clip or anything. These are the kinds of things I look for in an everyday bag. It also has a cute little zipper detail down here, so you can make the bag bigger or smaller, depending on your needs. I actually like the way that it looks zipped up, but unzipped is fine too. Uh, it has really beautiful soft leather. When you open it up, you have the matching lining, which was in perfect condition. I can't even believe how good of condition this is in because I got this bag for $28. <laughs> I know. It has a zipper on the inside, which is big enough for lipstick, phone, all that kind of stuff. And then it's got a big pocket in the middle. What do I even have in here? Ooh, I totally forgot about these fruit snacks that I bought last time I was at Ikea. Um, when I bought the couch, actually. In fact, here's the paperwork from buying the couch. Um, yes, I am completely guilty of not cleaning out my purse often enough. Anyway, it's just a great bag. It's a good size. Um, let me go ahead and show you guys. This one for me is a crossbody. So similar to the first bag that I showed you, it's very similar in color. This one is just a little bit more functional for an everyday bag for me. Although I probably wouldn't wear it with white because I'd be terrified that the burgundy would rub off on my white top. But anyway, there you go. Now this next bag I am really, really excited about, even though there's no designer attached to it, there's not a lot of, I'm not actually using this to go out. Um, I bought this really gorgeous 70s basket bag. Whew, can we just have a moment to just appreciate how pretty this is? Now it's a little bit, uh, a little bit worn, especially the top part of it has a lot of scratch marks probably from someone holding it and scratching it to get the, you know, the other strap in their hand or whatever. Maybe they had something on top of it. There's a little bit of separation. None of this is a big deal for me because I like that worn in, lived in look. But I wanted to mention all of that because this was in poor condition. I got it for $10. <laughs> really really good deal on this one and my my the second I saw I said camera bag so this has a little um, turn lock closure you flip it open and this is where I keep my camera lenses I also sometimes keep my camera in here but I'm filming on my camera right now but it fits along with the microphone everything fits in here perfectly it was completely meant to be one of those kismet moments where you're like wow that worked out so well and again, where can you buy a camera bag for 10 bucks? That's, especially one that's a beautiful quality like this. Um, I do wanna figure out what to do about the, the like straps. I don't know if this can be fixed, that they just sort of plop out like that. But what I do is I just hang it up. I have it right over here next to me. 
hanging on a door so that it's out of the way but that my, that way my camera is always in this room and it has somewhere to go that's put away that looks beautiful next up we have some fashion pieces and i have scored big time lately there's a lot of talk right now about how now is a really great time to buy secondhand because a lot of people are doing the KonMari method and cleaning out their closets and just the beginning of the year is usually a good time to do your secondhand shopping anyway first piece is a dress from a brand called fervor and uh this is a brand that is sold through mod cloth and i love fervor dresses so i was really excited to find this it's a beautiful cream and black dot dress they're not uniform polka dots which is my personal preference is for or sort of um they almost look like the 101 Dalmatian kind of prints like where they're irregular it's just my favorite I think it looks very chic and very uh, creative this dress is in a 4x which is a size larger than I normally buy but I wanted something that was looser and because it had ties I realized I could make it fit for now and then maybe even take this in and have it altered to fit me perfectly at a later date I love how springtime appropriate this is I love the color it just everything about it is lovely it's a great length this was such a find I paid $18 for this and I am just thrilled with it I think it's a really great find I love stuff like this because it's really um, something that's going to be perennially in fashion for a lot of uh, years because even though it's beautiful and spring inspired and very cute and beautiful, it's not specific to any particular trend. So that was really what drew me to this is that I felt like this is something I could wear for years and years and years to come. This next piece is a sweater you guys have seen me wear a lot. Uh, this is the one that has the hearts on the sleeves. I just thought it was the cutest thing I have ever seen. I've seen a couple of pieces like this when buying things secondhand, so you might be able to find something similar to this sweater. I've seen this from ASOS as well as from Torrid. This is such a great find. It's a boxy sweater. It's very comfortable. For me, it's almost like wearing a long t-shirt because it's, um, even though it is a sweater, it's, it's like lighter weight. I adore this piece. This is absolutely one of my favorite things that I've ever bought secondhand, period. And I've been wearing the crap out of it lately. You guys have seen me wearing this a lot. Now, I paid $35 for this, but I knew that it was going to be high quality because I've bought from ASOS for years. And even though they're sort of a fast fashion line, they're, in my experience, it's kind of hit or miss. But for the most part, I find ASOS to be very high quality. So was I saying ASOS or ASOS this whole time? I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'll, I'll admit it. I don't know. Is it ASOS? ASOS? Let me know in the comments. So the next piece is also a sweater. This is sort of like a, a high necked, almost, um, I forget what this style is called, where it's like high necked, but then it cut off almost like a halter top, but it's not actually a tied halter top. Anyway, um, if somebody knows the name of this style, please let me know in the comments because this is one of the most flattering styles for me. I love this type of style. I love the color of the ribbing. This is yellow, but it almost looks green in certain lightings. It's absolutely darling. I love this piece. I paid $12 for this, which is, I mean, this is Forever 21, so it's probably fairly close to what it cost originally, but it's in almost immaculate condition. There is one thing here. You'll notice there's a thread that's come loose and I just need to take the time to actually get a needle and thread it back through so that it looks nice and tidy again. I just haven't had the chance to do it. I actually have a, a small list of things I need to mend, including that 70s bag that I'm using as a camera bag. That one also needs some mending to it, so I need to just find a day, block out some time to do some mending of my clothes. So this next piece is not secondhand, but it is an ethical clothing line, and my friend Kobe started it, so I'm super proud of her. This is kooky and offbeat, and I just felt like it was perfect to talk about in a secondhand haul. Um, and plus, it's my channel. I can do whatever I want. So <laughs> um, this is a dress from a new clothing line called Cutting Shapes Club. This is from my friend Kobe. It has a divine all over it with little poops and guns and flamingos and if you've ever seen the movie Pink Flamingos you know what all of this is about. Uh, she made this line because she wanted to just make things that didn't exist and one thing I really like about this dress is that the arm of it really curves around your arm so you're not going to have your bra showing. This is something that like with plus size dresses a lot of times you know the arms are just cut too low and our bras show so because of this one has a little bit of like a cap sleeve your bra won't show i thought that was kind of genius it has a baby doll style where it has the empire waist it has pockets which i was thrilled about i mean ask any girl 
or you know tell any girl that you like her dress and if it has pockets the first thing she will say is it has pockets <laughs> this was designed in australia where kobe lives and it was ethically made in india in fact the tag even says that so i think it's really cool that she was able to come out with this amazing unique funky ethical line so anyway i'm just really excited about this and thought i would share that in this video as well the next piece is actually another one from asos um I have a little bit of an ASOS obsession. Uh, this is uh, a size US 22. So ASOS is known, and at least in my opinion, I think ASOS runs large. This is a really, really big dress. Um, it is just plain black on one side, which is what I loved about it. Just simple, simple, simple. But what I really bought this for was the back. It has a beautiful scarf print on the back of the dress polka dots, beautiful color. I was absolutely obsessed with this. Something that I noticed is that this is stained a little bit. You have some stains right here. That is kind of the risk that you run when you buy things secondhand. Occasionally there will be a minor stain or a little tiny rip or like a thread that's loose like with that sweater. So you just need to be really careful, um, especially if you're buying something online where you can't see it in person. When I buy things in person, I inspect it really, really thoroughly. And then I kind of, if I find anything wrong, I ask myself like, can I live with it? Can I fix it? I love it anyway. And I wear this around the house. I bought this to be an around the house dress. I bought it to be something comfortable where there's no bells and whistles. It just hangs, it's just comfy. Okay, so this next piece is an enormous coat. This is from Donnie Brooks. So it is quite large and in charge. Now, if this is an 80s, then I don't know what it is. This is so deliciously and delightfully freaking 80s. But, and, but see, here's the thing. As much as I love a shoulder pad, I almost feel like this is going too far. This is heading into like Dorothy from the Golden Girls kind of territory. And I, you know, I, I love the Golden Girls. I really do. And I actually find a lot of fashion inspiration from watching that show. However, I do think that a lot of um, Dorothy's shoulder pads are a little misguided because they're so big and so rounded. And that's what I feel like here. I feel like if this had more of like a sharp shoulder pad, it might work better. So I'm kind of trying to decide what I want to do with this. It's such a pretty color. It's such a cool, unique piece. The closure is actually just a little strip of fabric right here. So again, I could alter that or do something different with it. It's a cool jacket, but I just, I don't know about the shoulder pads. So I don't know. And then the final thing that I've been buying secondhand like crazy is jeans. And actually a lot of it is for my husband. So I've been buying him a lot of Levi's. These are um, 541s. They have like a relaxed kind of fit, um, very straight leg. So this has been his jam lately. For a long time, we were buying him some very expensive jeans for work from a brand called Duluth Trading. And I still love those jeans. They're they're really durable. My dad wears the fire hose jeans from, or fire hose pants from Duluth because they're made out of fire hose material. And he, my grandfather was a firefighter. So my dad just loves that kind of thing. So I'm not knocking that. However, Levi's are just a really great brand of jean. They hold up really well. And it's something you can definitely find on the secondhand market. In fact, the jeans that I'm wearing today are also Levi's that I also got secondhand. In fact, these are the ones that started it all. I paid $10 for these, and that's when I realized, oh, so Levi's are a thing that I could be buying secondhand. Let me move my chair out of the way so I can back up and show you guys. Let me point it down. Okay, so now you guys can see. These are skinny jeans. So what I liked about these is that they made my butt look insanely good. Like. Oh, hi, butt. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this video, how it was completely non-branded. I'm not telling you where I bought any of these things because it doesn't matter. The point is I bought them secondhand. I bought them all gently used. Actually, like in one case, a couple of things had like a couple of minor flaws, which is just something to keep in mind when you're buying secondhand. It's the risk you take, but you know, on the, on the flip side of that, you can find some really unique things that you wouldn't be able to find otherwise. It is so dark and stormy. You can see the sun is setting behind me. It's getting kind of dark in here. I'm going to curl up with a bowl of soup and watch Practical Magic. So I hope you're having a great day. See you guys in my next video. I'm Cora Diane. Just be your own kind of beautiful. See you. Bye.